Watch out for dollies. Oh, what are you doing? What are you doing? I'm not prepared for this. Not oh. hard enough. Turn. Scott excitedly gets the uh, stand unwrapped. Get her done! Get her done. Welcome to part three of setting up my 180 gallon glass reef tank. Uh, cut out and made. Open back. Um, <clears throat> 36 inch tall. Big doors, big access. We've just moved the new oak stand into position and we'll start assembling this new reef tank starting with a Euro style filter system. Not what I was hoping for. Got longer hoses? Yeah. They're right there in the sump. It's a simple open sump with a micron filter sock at its input end. It'll hold a protein skimmer, an algae scrubber, and a submersible DC operated water pump. Oh yeah, okay, I like that. Right, we'll right. also be adding in a water top-off system and adding an Apex aquarium computer system to monitor and control many other aspects of this aquarium system, including the lighting. The only thing I wonder is, is this sump gonna be big enough to hold the overflow from the tank? We just make sure the return lines are high so there's not much back siphon. Coming from a guy yeah. with 180 gallons below his reef tank, that comment doesn't surprise me. Uh, one of the next big challenges will be uh, getting the tank not so much in place because we can roll it over there on the cart, but lift it up, and that's going to be fine. For some reason, I'm concerned that the weight of this glass Diamond Edge Euro style reef tank with perimeter bracing is going to be too heavy. Let's check in with Condi and Reggie out front in the driveway. So we've got uh, the stand in position over there. The old tank is out of the house. And Condi is coming along on his uh, sculpture. As you can see, our foundation is egg crate. The rock is placed on top of this so that it can't be undermined by gobies or crabs. As Scott and I roll the new tank in on its cart, the reality of having to lift it becomes sooner and greater. The tank is half-inch panels of glass, polished with diamond edges. It's assembled with black silicone, and it has what's called a floating bottom, meaning that its weight is transferred to its outer panel edges. All right, so uh, we're going to have a fun time getting this tank onto the stand and what I want to do is throw some painters tape around these edges just to kind of protect his nice new stand a bit. We put it on. Got that pad to put in there as well. Yep. We do need to place a pad on top of the stand. But back to lifting the tank. I don't know why I'm so anxious about it. So run this painters tape along the edge here. Don't want it overhanging because then what happens is we get pinched between the yeah, and you'll never grass. get it out of there. And uh, with the blue tape there the rest of the life of the aquarium. Yippers. And you want to try to put that bulkhead bulkheads in place first? No. You're gonna to try to do that once it's up there through the hole? Thought about that and yeah, with the size of your tank and weight of your tank, I mean it's not ideal. Somebody's gonna to have to get on top of their 
long arms, i.e. you, to kind of hold that thing down in there. But once we get it started, we should be able to get the nut on there okay. But yeah, just tightening it up is the issue. Yeah, we should be able to get it tightened because I'll hold, we'll hold it from the bottom while we tighten them. I mean, it's a catch-22. I don't know. We can think about that and discuss that one. I just, you know, this tank is real heavy, obviously. And the easier it is to get it up there and not have to deal with trying to get something through that hole. Well, the hole is plenty big. I'd be more worried about if we, you know, start slipping and it goes it. onto yeah. there. We could yeah. crack the bottom of the tank, which would be a disaster. Epic proportions. Let me get the pad. Somehow, um, I didn't film the, the cutting or positioning of the pad on top of the stand for the tank to sit on. Maybe I was distracted by how heavy that tank's going to be. So we're at the point of defining how to lift the tank. Now that's a mistake. You can't ask four guys how to do anything. Each has his own idea. Yeah, but you're not going to, when you slide it on that phone, because the way it's going to push it's the phone. Say. So we're going to want to try to just get it lined up. You know what? Screen. Unless you want to go one corner and bring it over. Get one corner and no wonder it. I'm nervous about lifting the tank. He says stay on top of this. I would just say we try to get it straight in. And okay. Hee-ho. Oh, it's not that bad. No, it's not. Okay, hold on. Fingers Fingers back. Back. Hang on. You know, the... Okay, we're well, lined here, sort of. We're gonna have to lift this side up. I gotta get something. Out of my, yeah, fingers, gotta get, get, my fingers are gonna come out, so hang no. on. Okay, yeah, I know, it's gotta come towards me. There we go. Move it towards me. Perfect. Hmm. That was easy. Oh. <laughs> that was easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then everything right else. on, man. Oh. With the tank now on top of the stand, Scott removes the protective plastic wrap and cardboard edges. So the tank is in position. I have to admit I was really quite apprehensive about having to lift that up there. I figured it was going to be quite heavy. And for the four of us, it was relatively heavy, but not as heavy as I expected. And now having said that, I wish I'd gone with maybe a tank that was a foot longer, maybe another six inches wider. But once I have the stools here, this is the perfect height to look inside the tank. So that'll be quite the perspective looking inside there. Our starting point is the drain from the tank. This tank has a 6 inch by 12 inch three sided box mounted in the middle of the back of the tank. It's called an internal overflow. The water in the tank has to rise up to the top of this box to overflow into and then drain out through fittings in the bottom of the box. Aside from eliminating other drain holes in the tank, it skims the surface of the water as that water overflows into it. There are two other assemblies inside the internal overflow, a drain in the form of a hard standpipe and a return line in the form of soft tubing. This leads down to the filter. So you've probably always wondered what those fancy aquarium filters are, but in reality, if you look real close inside the cabinet, there's a little man who does the filtering. Okay, so we're in the process of putting in the, uh, the Durzo standpipe. What this does is it uh, raises the water level in the overflow and then to a certain degree it creates a pseudo siphon. Basically it's just a way of quieting the overflow so there's not a whole lot of splashing. Uh, also a return line that'll come through the face. There'll be some uh, uh, lock line there with a couple of flares on the end of it. And I think Scott is in the process of uh, tightening the bulkhead for that. Not enough room to get in there. Yeah, Should have tightened it up before we put the tank on the stand. Well, except the problem is that we risk cracking the tank doing so. Okay, so drilled a hole through the wall there. That'll be his passage for the uh, electrical and apex cables, etc. And now I guess he's going to cut a piece of pipe to act as a 
conduit or a, a chase, I guess he called it. So, uh, and then the pin for the pivot is on the back right. There you go. I need tape measure. And we've come to that important time of the day called lunchtime or break. And of course, pizza. Mmm. Do you want to stir things up in your tank? Create some rock and roll? Make your corals do the hula hula? Internal circulation is the movement of water within the tank. Increasing water flow inside the tank helps flush and sweep up debris. It entices corals to open fuller with greater polyp extension. Fish respond naturally and move gracefully in the variable currents. Jivo wave maker pumps can do this. Four models, inexpensive to obtain, easy to install, internal pumps magnetically grasp the sides of your tank, and each or all units have five effect settings along with separate speed and power controls. Or check out the advanced LED systems at affordable prices. Reef Breeders has a two-year warranty on lights along with DC pumps, dosing pumps, and protein skimmers. That's reefbreeders.com. Reef Hobbyist Magazine believes that our hobby, our fellow hobbyists, and the animals in our care are best served by the free distribution of quality information. Reef Hobbyist Magazine provides hobbyists with critical husbandry information with an emphasis on marine ornamental breeding efforts. Reef Hobbyist Magazine is available for free in local fish stores across the country or you can subscribe at www.reefhobbyistmagazine.com. All right. Okay, so uh, we're working on our manifold layout here, and the manifold um, is where our water essentially is distributed. So from the return pump, the return pump will go into this union gate here, union ball valve here. Um, I chose a union ball valve, so if he ever needs to replace his pump, he can simply disconnect it. Um, Ooh, I watch. He can disconnect it real easily and pull the pump out. So we've got our inlet here, um, and then we have our water distribution. Now he runs an algae scrubber, um, so one of these could be used to feed the algae scrubber. Um, one of these will be used to feed the chiller that will ultimately return back to the tank, and then these could be used at a later date for GFO and carbon reactors. So that's the idea of the manifold. And once this whole thing is assembled, We'll hang it in there, mount it against um, the stand someplace so that it's out of the way but easily accessible so that he can get in there and adjust his flow nicely. Um, so the first item of business is going to be to plumber's putty or Teflon putty these fittings into place because once we get um, these things glued together there really won't be any space to tighten these things up. So we'll have to get them good and tight the first go around and then we can start gluing our manifold together and, uh, and we'll put our pipe nibbles into place because we're going to use flexible tubing instead of hard plumbing and uh, rock and roll. So, next item of business is to go get nasty with plumber's putty. So you're essentially drilling holes into the rocks and then putting pins in there and then drilling a hole into the next rock and using the pin to connect it. Once Reggie or Condi have drilled the initial hole, they can then place a pin into it and then determine where the opposing hole and connecting rock will be best positioned. You like how it's looking so far? I do. Okay. It's a standard masonry bit and drill, but the rock, being made from coral sediment, is fairly easy to drill into. 
So I've never been a, a big fan of Teflon tape. Um, you know, if you accidentally bump something, it turns or whatever, you tend to have more release with Teflon tape. So I use Teflon paste with this piped up PTFE stuff. Um, it's got Teflon in it. And if you use this stuff and use it right, you'll never ever have a leak. And pretty much any fitting that's over half inch, I use this on especially large fittings and what I do is apply a pretty liberal amount. I'll take a piece of cardboard like I have here and use that to smear it into the thread so the threads are completely covered in it from top to bottom and this stuff I really hate it. I have a love-hate relationship with it. It's really messy and every time I work with it I to get it all over the place but in my opinion there really isn't a better method of dealing with threaded fittings you know, I don't use this stuff sparingly I use it like I said pretty literally getting it into all the threads and use my little cardboard thing here to make sure that it's in there good and I've never ever had threaded fitting leak when using this stuff, but like I said, it's a real messy nightmare. Um, I think it started. This will be our gate valves for our manifold. And once this thing is glued together, there is no going back and tightening these fittings, so we're gonna get them all good and tight. The nice thing about this stuff is it does obviously a great job sealing, but it doesn't, it, it hardens a little bit, but it doesn't harden to the point where you can't unthread things later down the line. So, get that tight as we can. And then, once I have all of them done, I'll go back and Clean that up with a paper towel. As you can see, I mean, there's an excess of it there, but you know, I use it liberally, like I said, and never had a leak. So we'll continue putting our valves together. That way we can assemble our manifold. We're just about ready to at least put the sump in to get a feel for uh, space and positioning where the plumbing and the manifold and all that's going to go. So yeah, what, we're, what I'm unsure of is whether I want to mount the manifold over here or have it hanging down here and I'm kind of leaning over there. The only downside is, is if we add media reactors, you know, where do we want to have the media reactors and, you know, where, um, you know, how are we going to route the plumbing for them? So that's the one thing I'm trying to kind of get a sense of right now is where the best place would be. If it were me, I'd have me reactors that somehow mount underneath here. Um, from a gym standpoint, maybe something that's on the bottom is a little bit more convenient. I like the ones that hang, you just spin the cartridge off, uh, which would probably be the way that I would lean towards going. But given that, you know, we have to have a line that connects to one of these hoses here. Um, Jim's leaning away from his water file style. Uh, Only because there doesn't rubber. appear to be mu enough room to, to keep it in there. Yeah, there's some of the, you know, stick on the glass type of algae yeah. scrubbers. So Definitely a, a hog in place of it. So the question comes is where do we build this big reactor? Where do we mount it? So this being the new DC operated water pump, this one sold by Reef Breeders. It's a JBO pump, but the point is that it's a DC operated. So it should be uh, much more energy efficient. And in addition to being more efficient, it's noise free. This being the pump. So 
So while I was uh, sent to the uh, local fish store to pick up a, a needed fitting, Condi and Reggie have started uh, assembling the aquascaping in the tank. Having pre-assembled the sculpture in three sections out front in the driveway, Condi is now moving the sculpture into position a section at a time, this being the first of the three sections. Very nice. So out here is where the chiller has sat, kind of to the side of the workbench and behind the water purification. That's the two holes that the hose that originally connected the chiller came to the chiller. And then over here is the water purification going out behind the laundry stuff. So Scott's electrical will come through uh, that pipe there. I guess he's going to replace those two hoses to the chiller. We do have an extension cord, so we can run the extension cord, the short cord, through there for the chiller. That way the chiller, um, the apex will act as a fail-safe for that. Okay. Initially we'll plug it in down here until we connect the apex. Okay. So the power supply currently for the chiller was down here, connected to, I believe, an outlet over there. He's going to take that cord, somehow pass it through there, of which in turn it'll then interface with the apex unit which will act as, as he calls it, a fail-safe. This still has its own thermostat on there but uh, if for some odd reason it gets too high or too low the apex will uh, turn it on or off. Okay, so back out here with Condi once again. I was doing the rock. By the way, this is the uh, Euro-style glass tank that has their uh, polished edges on it and then they've used black silicone and I have to admit I've been a person who's promoted acrylic tanks for the last 20 years and a big part of it is the elimination of those obvious seams but uh, this being a coral reef tank and I know me I uh, like B-Ionics which is a calcium alkalinity supplement and it in turn encourages coralline algae and as I said I know me and I don't get in there to clean so the point being that you can clean a glass tank with a razor blade and scratch off all that calcareous algae whereas a, an acrylic aquarium such as the one out on the front lawn that has all the uh, uh, calcareous algae on it uh, is a whole lot harder to keep clean and again I know me so uh, one of the nice things, though, about this Euro-style bracing is a typical glass tank has no frame around it, and invariably you end up with all that salt creep that comes up over the edges and runs down the back and runs down the front. This, again, has the Euro bracing, which will eliminate all of that, uh, not all of it, 99% of that uh, salt creep occurring. Also had them drill a hole here that will make for a, more of a direct shot for the position of the uh, Yabo internal pumps. And with Condi above and Scott below, right, I'm multi-level tasking. You can wrap around the back side there if you want it. Um, or where is the sump position? Is it sump pushed all the way back? I mean, can you pull it more towards the center of the cabinet? Just put the hose on the back side of the sump? Yeah. Or I guess what he's going to do is route it behind there. There's a return line coming off on the underside of the tank. You know, is this going to be workable? <laughs> Should be when you go to do your uh, filter sock change. So, you know, it's a matter of. Follow what I'm saying? Okay. So you can see here that essentially it's three stacks of rock that interlace with each other, <clears throat> but they start off sitting on egg crate panels in the bottom of the tank. Now, some have said that that's going to trap sediment or debris, but what we found was that it helped. Uh, so the rock doesn't slide around, uh, at least until sand gets in there. Or worse, um, the critters inside don't actually burrow underneath it and collapse the rock. Uh, yes, the they don't undermine uh, the rock itself. So it creates a more of a solid foundation, I guess, would be 
uh, what the rock sits the upon. So he's so got that, three kind of branching the stacks you don't there just twist it. Um, you can't twist that uh, the he's got different you rocks pinned over. together. This, this is already coming up. So you got enough room for the magnet there? Mm -hmm. This one right here. He can here. use a wand right there. Yeah. And so as Condi works on the sculpture above, and Scott assembles the filter system below, make it a point to come on back for part four as we add the new LED light strips to the canopy as well as the sand and fill it up with new salt water.